how to build a dynamic and interactive dashboard here in Excel within 50 minutes. And whenever I change here the year, all the sales values just update for me, so the chart. We don't need to use pivot tables, pivot charts to make a dashboard in Excel. We're just gonna from this data set to the dashboard itself. So we're just gonna use here two functions. The first one is the text function, and then we're gonna use the sum ifs function here in Excel. With just these two functions, we can build this modern looking dashboard here in Excel. So let's find out how can you do it. Let's go. First step to build a dashboard here in Excel is to have a data set. And doesn't matter if your data set is different than mine, because with the step by step that I'm gonna give you here, you can follow these steps and you're gonna get in the same result. So let's check it out what I have here from this data set. I have the data, the date, the order ID, the client name, and the quantity, the freight, and the total. Or I have here a sales report, a order reporter. So the first thing I need to do here is to think about my dashboard. What type of information I want to show in my dashboard? So in my dashboard, I want to show the information by month, for example, sales by month. That way I know that I don't need to use all the columns that I have here in my data set. However, if I just want the date and the total, for example, I just need to use these two columns. So the first column where I have the date and the column where I have the total. However, because the fact that I want just the months, how much I, I sold per month, I can't use exactly this first column right here, the date. Because in this column here, I have all the information about the date, the month, the day, and the year. However, I don't need the day, the month, and the year. I just need the year and the month to use in my dashboard. So the day is not important for me. Knowing that, I'm gonna create here a column to help me extract just the month from this date right here. The month and the year. But however, let's start with the, the month. So let me just extract the month of this date right here. To make that, I can use the text function here in Excel. So equal sign text function. Let me just double click it, one, two. The value that I'm looking for is this first date that I have here comma and what is the format that I want so let's say I want to extract just the month from that date so I can use open quotations marks MMM three times close quotations mark and then close parentheses enter now I can just extract only the month from this date that I have and to make sure all the rows contain the same function let me just double click here in the corner of the cell one two okay now all the rows have the same formula the same function and uh, as you guys can see, all the rows extract just the month. However, if you take a close look here, we still have the January month. We have the January month too here in this column. However, if I just go here in the first column, I can see it's not from the 2023 year, it's the year 2024. So we need to find a way to separate it, these two informations, because I have here January, but it's January 2023, and down below I have 2024 and 2025, so I have to find a way to just separate it, these informations. So let me use here another column that I'm gonna call it year, and then with the same function, equal sign text function, double click it, I'm gonna look for the same value, that is my date, and then I'm gonna use comma, and for the format, I'm gonna use instead of three times the letter M, I'm gonna use three, four times, or three, okay, four times the letter Y because I want the year, so I'm gonna close parentheses and press enter. Let me here just double click here in the corner of the cell to make sure all the rows contain the same formula. And okay, now we have, uh, let's say January 2023, and here I have January 2024, and down below I have, let's see if we have, yes, like here, January 2025. Now it's a good way to just separate it month and year and make sure even if you have uh, months that is equal to each other, let's say January, we have the year to separate these this months. Now that we're done here with the data set, we can just click here and add a new sheet. Okay, now I'm gonna right click here, rename, and this is gonna be my dashboard. And the first thing I'm gonna do here in my dashboard is just to, in this first cell right here, I'm gonna type it in, let's say year, enter, and then just below the ear, I want to select the ear. So instead of just typing manually the ear, I can just create here a list. And whenever I click it, I can select all the ears that I just gonna insert it in. So let me delete it. 
and then in the cell A2, I'm gonna click here in, in date, okay, data, and then I go here in data tools, data validation, data validation, with this new pop up that's gonna be for me, allow any value, no, I just want to allow list, and my list is gonna be 2023, for example, and then comma, 2024, comma, 2025, and if you have more information to insert it in your list, you can just insert the information and in between each one of these informations you can use comma to separate it, okay? Let me just click here, okay, and yeah. Now, whenever I click here, I can select the year, 2023, 2024, 2025. Now, I just want to make sure I just insert here the month, let's say January, and I need the total the, the, the total sales of the January 2025. And if I change the year for 2024, let's say, I want here the total of sales of the January month of 2024. To make sure it's possible to happen, I can use the equal sign sum ifs function. That way, uh, instead of just sum all the total column, I can just sum the specific values that matches with the January month and also with the 2024 year. However, before we do it, let's just click here in the January month. In the corner of the cell, I'm gonna click, hold and drag to the right. That way I can automatically enter the months in all the, the columns that I have to December. Okay. Now here in this first cell, I'm gonna use equal sign sum if. What is the difference between the sum if and the sum ifs function? The sum if is gonna allow you to use just one criteria. However, here we have two criteria. The first one is the month, and the second one is the year. So, two criteria, two conditions. This is why we need to use the sum ifs function. Let me double click it. One, two, okay. The first thing the sum ifs function is asking me is the sum range. And the sum range is here in my report in the column F. So, let me just select the entire column F, okay? Now I'm gonna press here, comma, and what is my criteria range number one, for example? I can use the year, let's say, so let me just select all the column age, comma, and what is my first criteria? As we just select the year, the column of the year, as my criteria range, I need to select here in my dashboard the, the cell that contains the years to match with the, the column that we just selected. And here, uh, one important step in the year, I just need to press F4 key to make sure the reference of the cells is gonna stay as it is. So even if I just click in the cell, hold and drag to the right, the reference of the year is gonna stay always in the cell A2. And this is what I need, okay? And let's do the same thing here with the report FF column. So F4 key. And the same thing here with the H column uh, four key. Okay, now we can continue, comma, and my criteria range number two, it can be the month, let's say, so the column G, F4 key, do not forget it, comma, and then I'm gonna go select the criteria number two, that is here in the cell B1, okay, January. And here I do not need to freeze, to lock the reference of the January month, because whenever I just click, hold and drag to the right of the cell, I want this specific cell here to follow my drag, drag to the right, okay? So let me just here close parentheses and then press enter. Here I have the result of the sales in the January of 2024. And whenever I change the year, let's say instead of 2024, I use 2025, the value, the result, just gonna update for me, 2023, 2024, okay. Now let me just uh, click here, hold and drag to the right to make sure all the columns contain the same function. And as you guys just saw before, whenever I just change here the year, all the results is gonna update for me. And one interesting thing to do here is just to select all these results here, click here in Home tab, and then put it in dollar format, okay? Now let me just select everyone here, Home tab. Let me just ally everyone here in the middle, Put everyone here in bold, uh, add some colors to make uh, it a little bit more with a modern looking. Let me use this dark gray, put the text in white, and here I'm gonna do the same thing for the ear, or I can just use in yellow for the ear. And one more time again, let me just select all the values that I have, and then we use here all borders. Now we can move on to the chart itself. So let me just 
click here insert they're gonna select let's say a column chart the first option here the first thing you're gonna do here is just to take all these informations here above and insert it in the chart so let me right click in the chart I'm gonna select the option select date and here in the series I'm gonna click add I can use a name however I'm gonna leave it in blank the service value I'm gonna delete it and then I'm gonna select all the values that I have in the result all the sales I select all this entire row I'm gonna click OK and here in the horizontal category axis labels I'm gonna click edit it and I'm gonna select the months January February to the December okay okay again and here we have our chart and whenever we just change here the year the chart is gonna update for us so it's already automatically however to make sure it's looking modern and pretty we can just make some adjustments here so let me just select this title right here delete it these background lines I'm gonna select and delete too and these values here in the left I'm gonna select and delete too uh, now one important thing is to make sure we put the result here above all this column chart because now I cannot know how much I sold in the January month, in the February, in the March so it's important to have a number to have this value so let me select here the chart and then I go in chart design add chart element, data label and then I'm gonna select outside end and we already have the values here above the chart let me double click in the blue column here and in this gap width, I'm gonna just make it like 150, let's say, or even lower, like 100. Because that way we can make this column a little bit thicker and it's easy to see. Another thing I'm gonna use here is the effect shadow. And then I'm gonna select here this first option. I'm gonna use for transparency uh, 35, let's say, in blur 2, and in distance, I'm gonna use 4. Now we're gonna move on to the fill and line border I'm gonna use no line and for a few I'm gonna use gradient fill and I'm gonna use a yellow one and instead of using radial I can change it for linear let's say okay now we can just adjust here the angle I want to make sure the the color the yellow color is here in the top so let's move this angle to 207 maybe yes okay it's good let me just close it and we finish our chart. One more thing you can do here is just select the chart, go here home, put everyone in bold, paint the text in black, let's say, it's easier to see. And here in format, we can just shape outline, use a, a green color, let's say, shape effect and put here a shadow to make it a little bit more easier to look at. And one more thing, there are some numbers that is overlaying each other here. So let me double click it, one, two, and instead of just using the decimal values, I can just hide it. So here in number, I'm gonna use, instead of general, I'm gonna use uh, currents, let's say. And decimal places, I'm gonna use zero. Press enter. Now we can close this out and we're done. Our chart is already in the screen, everything is done. And whenever we change the year, all the values is gonna be updated for us. And the chart, of course, is gonna update you. So I hope this video can help you out and if you have any questions just comment down below and I see you tomorrow as every day has a new video, I see you there.